Welcome to my review for The Last Jedi. Sorry, I mean The Last of Us Part 2. Now just so you know, again another preface for this video. I have a lot, and I mean I have a lot of stuff to talk about with The Last of Us Part 2. So obviously there are definitely going to be some spoilerific statements I'm going to make. Um, just a word of caution, this is a spoiler review. I have a lot written down with my thoughts, including my review rating. I, there was way too much for me to memorize. I just, I jotted it down through the, my entire playthrough, which you can find on my YouTube channel, my entire playthrough. Um, so let me just say, first of all, I played The Last of Us Part Two on very easy. It took me about 16 to 17 hours to play through. Most of the time I played stealth, uh, a lot of the time, especially near the end, I was just kind of running because I wanted to experience more of the story. I got a good taste of the combat and the gameplay mechanics, and I just wanted to get more of the the tone of the story. So I kind of wanted to just mesh it together near the end. So I kind of just ran at the end. Um, so yeah, I beat it on very easy. Um, I may go back to it and play it on the hardest, but there are some things, like I said, in my review categories and statements that might be obligated for me to say I may not go back to it, but anyway. So, I'm gonna get all of my positives out of the way, first of all. I gotta, I gotta say as well, The Last of Us Part Two is not a dumpster fire. It's not a zero out of 10. Uh, people that are giving it zero out of 10s and are literally just saying it's SJW propaganda and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that may be, I'm not disagreeing with them, but that doesn't mean that the game is a zero out of 10. Okay, the game does do some things right. Not a lot, some things. And I have to say, I, one of my top five favorite games is The Last of Us, the very first one, and Left Behind. Um, my one friend can vouch for me he he actually let me experience the Left Behind DLC in his playthrough in person, and it's a two-hour, three-hour DLC that's basically a prequel to the first Last of Us game, and it involves Ellie with her friend Riley, and I won't get into the spoilers for that, just not going to, but what I can say, here's how much I know about stories. Right at the very beginning, when my friend started playing Left Behind, I called the very end. Right, at, Everything that happened at the end of Left Behind, I called it right from the very second. Now, that's, that's not a bad thing. Left Behind and The Last of Us, they're both mesmerizing. 10 out of 10s. Both of them. I don't care what your gripes are. My personal opinion, there is nothing wrong with them. The absolute only bare minimum thing I can think of is the plot. Okay, it was semi-standard, but how they choreographed and focused the story, the storytelling, the narrative, the combat, the gameplay, everything within and intertwined with The Last of Us and the story, mesmerizing, flawless. So, fast forward seven years later, we get The Last of Us Part 2 after four or five different reveal trailers, gameplay trailers, story trailers, they had you leading to believe that the entire 15 to 25 hour, give or take the difficulty, how you play it, you'll be focused on Ellie. And Neil Druckmann flat out stated these things, that you'll play as nothing but Ellie, and it's a story about hate and revenge. And they delve so deep into very gritty, dark territories of violence and conflict. And I was hooked. Right from the reveal trailer of Ellie playing the guitar, with the masterful song that she played, it all was gripping. And Joel creepily coming in, it all felt right and necessary as a sequel. Now the full game released. I was one of the ones that pre-downloaded it, so I started it Friday at midnight. And I just finished it last night. I talked to one friend about it. We agreed and disagreed about some things. We gave each other 
uh, key plots and plot points and, you know, our sides to things. And because I'm not a bigot, okay? Everybody has their own opinion. But I must say, this is not a zero out of 10. I'm sorry, guys, but it's not. This has a couple good things to it. And what I can say is the positives. Hands down, this is still one of the best looking games on current console. Last of Us Remastered, hands down, it was a beautiful game. Okay, utilizing the PS3 visuals back whenever it was on PS3, ramping it up, not just as a remaster, but they gave it the 4K treatment, and I mean all of it, the 4K, 2160p, they gave it HDR, and the first Last of Us Remastered looks flawless. Last of Us Part 2 is the same. It looks amazing. The environments, they're not as diverse, but they look amazing. You go to beaches, you are in the middle of a post-apocalyptic, torn-down Seattle, you're underground, um... You're in camps, farms, and it, it all looks great. The actors and actresses, for what they were given, they, they do their parts. They do phenomenal jobs, okay? Whether, whether their character story or how, it, how they play out as a character, anything. It, the fact of the matter is the actors and actresses, what they were given for material... They did really good jobs. I'm sure you all know that I was going to say this. Ellie is still an exceptional main character. This, her, her story in this game is so mesmerizing and captivating. Her relationship with Joel improves and digresses as well. Uh, due to certain plot points that I'm not going to spoil. This I'm able to hold back. Um... The gameplay is basically ripped exactly from the first one and implemented into this one. That's not a bad thing. They did tweak the gameplay animations, the facial animations, and everything looks lifelike and realistic. And yeah, it basically plays out exactly like The Last of Us 1. Well, I really wish this were a longer list of positives. Because that's the end of my positives. That's the end of my positives for a game called The Last of Us. Keep in mind, I have two pages. Alright, let's get into the nitty gritty. What you guys want me to start talking about. The negatives of The Last of Us Part 2. Often messy story. Yes. The story itself is poorly written. The story's telling of it is just it's it's so bad it is bad storytelling if if they had a better written story and the same storytelling this would have been acceptable but what we were given as for the writing there really wasn't any substance really nothing they i appreciate the attempt of character studies with certain individuals but it all just feels so hollow, okay? This was supposed to be a game, a 15 to 25 hour game on Ellie and focusing her character and, and focusing on her hatred and revenge for things that happen. And instead, what'd we get? We got about eight hours of Ellie and about huh, 400,000 hours of Abby. Which we'll get into that. Trust me. We will get into that part of the story. <sighs> Terrible plot devices for plot progression. And I have, I have a couple to list off. Just a couple. And there are more. And I must also mention. This is where the hardcore spoilers come in. So another word of caution. So the terrible plot devices to me. And just a couple. Dina's pregnancy. Well, I'm not against that. I liked how they paralleled that with Abby's one one friend. I don't even remember her name. Uh, again, we'll get into that, that part of the story. But they paralleled Dina's pregnancy with another girl's. And basically, you know, it, it's, it's supposed to be 
Look, in a post-apocalyptic world, if you're a 100% physically fit person, more chances than not, you will survive. If there's any kind of deterioration to your health, chances are you're going to die. So we find out Dina's pregnant and okay, it was fine in the beginning, right after we found out she was pregnant, like it, she went through the motions, she felt sick, she needed to lay down and rest constantly. Okay, that was fine, not bashing that. Near the end, they black out and her story is not ending and she was held at knife point at her throat and they blacked it out just like they did the Sopranos series finale. But with The Last of Us, they continued it and she's alive and has a kid. So apparently it was nine months later. Plot armor. Gotta love it. Tommy and Joel instantly helping Abby and company. This is hands down the most pivotal subject in this game to talk about. While I don't fully disagree with what they were going for with the plotting of Joel's death, you know, I, I played through the whole story. I have the whole picture of what happened and why. But at the very beginning or, you know, middle, whatever it was, whenever Joel dies, it's like there was no reason for it. It shouldn't have happened the way that it happened. Even after getting explanation after explanation after explanation, it was too much explaining from Abby. After, even after getting all of those explanations about why she had to do what she had to do, it still did not make sense as a character. Joel and Tommy should, n should not let outsiders like that in just boom like that. While I agree with that, I also have to disagree with people's hatred towards it because I told my one friend who I was talking to through my whole journey, you know, and they did, they did show that throughout the rest of the story. You have to figure it's five years after the end of The Last of Us and Joel and Ellie, they find a, a new group that they, they look at as family figures and five years on, you know, they go through their own personal dramas together and whatnot, but five years on, they are settled down and they still go on watches and all of that, but you do lose your instincts. If you're not always 100% 24-7 time-wise looking out for yourself, you do lose your instincts on how to survive. Not all of them, but you do lose some of what kept you alive. So... I'm conflicted if I like or dislike Joel's death. I'm leaning more towards I dislike it, mainly because of how they told the story of it. But, you know, as for that, I'm, I'm not really a hater for his, his death scene, but I also don't really like it. I think they could have done a lot more and they could have done it so much better too. Abby's lineage explained at odd times. Here we go. We're starting with that part of the story. So like I said, approximately six to eight hours playing as Ellie. But I said earlier, it's a 15 to 25 hour game. Yeah, that's because you play as Abby most of the game. Abby, a character who you don't even know. And that's why they added this into the game. They wanted you to get to know her. They wanted you to get to know the girl that killed everybody's favorite character. Yes, Ellie w was a fan favorite, but let's, let's be honest. I'll be honest. Joel was my favorite character in The Last of Us. So they killed Joel with this girl called Abby, and we hate her for that. And they have us led to believe that they were a group from the Fireflies sent to kill him because of what he did at the end of The Last of Us. And here you find out <clears throat> her dad was one of the surgeons for Ellie's operation at the end of the first game, which while I don't disagree with that story, with the writing of that, I just, I, I just, I, I'm not okay with what they did at all with the story of The Last of Us Part Two. 
I don't disagree and I don't hate everything, but I will disagree that they did a lot of things wrong. And mainly they used The Last of Us license as an agenda fueled propaganda for their own ideologies. And that's blatantly obvious because there's a, there's a sex scene in The Last of Us Part Two where Abby strips and everything and it's made abundantly clear she there's a chance that she may be transgender. I mean, her body looks like a man. Maybe it was the camera angle, but she looked like a man declothed. Anyway, so there was Abby's dad with what happened to him being one of the kills at the end of The Last of Us and just her whole her whole backstory that led up to killing Joel and then there's another part later on in the game where she finds Ellie and Tommy in them and it just that was a really really long part of the game Ellie forced to kill dogs contrasted Abby's need to help dogs and yes I don't have to say this is what I think they were going for. I literally just said what I think they were going for. I I believe that they were trying to contrast Ellie going out and, you know, whenever the enemies are around, they usually have dogs around who actually find your scent and they trace you down from that. And she has to kill them if, if she's caught. Meanwhile, Abby's story, she's basically like, screw everybody that's not my group and I hold these dogs in highest regards even over my group and she treats them like, I don't know, I don't know how Republicans treat Donald Trump, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, I get what they were going for and I agree with the thought, but I disagree with how they told it. The writing was pretty bad with that as well. Uh, this is one that really, really irritated me. Literally every single guy is just a physical object for an agenda. A lot of people are criticizing the writers, mainly Neil Druckmann, the main writer and director of The Last of Us Part Two, for bringing his own personal agenda and opinions and belief into a licensed game. This is what I said to my friend the other night. It feels as though... Not Naughty Dog, but Neil Druckmann, it, it feels like he wanted to add in his own ideologies into a story, which, okay, that's fine. But he, I guess, didn't think that it would be popular enough to make money. So he used The Last of Us license and completely ruined one of, one of the greatest game franchises ever made. So, yeah. Thanks, Neil. I really liked how you wrote and directed Uncharted 4. Last of Us Part 2? Not so much. Not so much at all. And, you know, like, like I said, I have plot points to point out part of these negatives. So, the main one being Joel's death. They It was just fueled by girl power. And uh, they were just trying to look at it as girls can do anything a guy can do even kill a guy that you know it has trained himself not to get himself in these situations but here comes this random unknown abby and i'm not i'm not disagreeing with the thought of girls can do everything as well i'm not disagreeing with that i'm disagreeing with the guy's aspect the, the guy characters in this game are treated so poorly. There's definitely a giant wide ratio between how they handle the girl characters and how they handle the guy characters. Even the girl characters, some of them, they abuse them in the with the writing. Like Ellie could have had so much more and better things to do and go through in this story. They They literally promoted her as the main character, and then they made her back 
as a secondary character for this goddess queen possibly transgender character named Abby who kills one of uh, one of gaming's most beloved characters and they're just like here's Ellie oh but here's Abby here's Abby here's her backstory we love Abby everything about Abby is great you know like I said about Joel Jesse they used him as as a, a used to just impregnate Dina and then he just dies he just gets shot in the head and dies randomly, which I'm not against. I'm not against that plot twist of him dying. I'm against behind that. He didn't have anything to do in the freaking story other than knock Dina up when they were still together, you know, before the, the story even started and then die. That's all he did. Oh, sorry. He was sort of a moral compass for Ellie by saying things like, well, she's pregnant. We need to take her back to camp. She can't keep going. That's about it. That, that's, that's character development for Jesse. Hey, you know what? Ten times more character development in this game towards Jesse than they gave Joel. Actually, no. I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm conflicted on that because there are scenes pertaining to Joel that are Joel and Ellie, but it's more so about developing Ellie's character. Like I said, the main focus on The Last of Us Part Two story was the girl characters. And it not even all of them. Ellie is treated like a piece of trash in this game. Like, that's not, a, that's not against what she goes through. That's against the writing of the game. She's literally thrown into the world to go find Abby. And when we find Abby, you know, six to eight hours later, to, we find Abby and then it's just like, flashback to, you know, three, four days and years later and we go through her story. And I get what Neil Druckmann was, was trying to go for. He was trying to go for just a parallel of Ellie and Abby's stories leading up to when they finally confront each other six different times in the freaking game. But it just, it didn't work at all. The main reason being, not because of their gender, not because Abby's a transgender, possibly, sorry. It's because Abby's story is so freaking boring. It is so boring. She meets characters like Lev, who also tries to find his mother, and other characters like in the group, you get to know more about them, and you know, the, the secondary and tertiary characters are fine. Abby, as a character who we are focused on for half, at least half of the game, she's a boring character. She has no personality to her except to ha make a face like this. That's it. Literally, if you stealth kill someone, go up close. Every single time you look at Abby, she's looking like this. That's it. <sighs> and like I already touched base on this one, unforgivable writing of character actions and motives. Main one being Joel's death, which again, I already got into that. It was poorly written. Poorly written and poorly told. I'll just leave it at that. Again, Jesse needed just to impregnate and die. Yep, Jesse just needed to be a character to knock Dina up for her to look at Ellie and say, I'm pregnant or I think I'm pregnant. And then for them to raise a child that's not even Ellie's. And technically, Dina didn't even want it. Forced, illogical, unlimited ammo sequences that don't match the premise of the game at all. This was the worst thing for this game for me. I hated these sections. They have them in Uncharted, and it works well. What they were trying to do with the gameplay was they tried to bring in the Last of Us gameplay, which is fine. Still solid gameplay. But they tried to incorporate Uncharted's mechanics into The Last of Us Part 2. And I watched major critic labels, reviews of The Last of Us Part 2, and they even said that they blended them, and they blended them well. They, they didn't. Don't listen to those critics. They did not. Okay. I can forgive having a grappling hook and stuff like that. I'm not saying if it is in here or not. I'm trying not to be as spoilery, but it's really hard. But Unlimited ammo sequences, like when you're in a truck and they're driving, you have to shoot enemies. It happens like five or six times. 
and it just it's so jarring it's so off-putting to the game as a whole and the story it's just yeah in a post-apocalyptic war-torn ravaged world where ammo is very scarce oh but you can shed 25 bullets at this one guy because truck is moving and i'll leave it at that first hours will seem uncharacteristic before playing through the whole game I have one example, and we all know what that is. Joel's death. I already criticized this death scene. I'm not, I'm not going to beat the dead horse. But what I will say, play through the whole game and then judge it as a whole and individually. So what I can personally say is Joel's death scene right then and there, pretty awful. I disagreed with it. Now, through the whole game, they did lead up to you know, like between Abby's story and Joel and Ellie's relationship being more characterized after the events of Last of Us 1's ending. And I mean, it was a little more justified, but the whole entire story was just poorly written as a whole. This one was my number two that, that really, really pissed me off. Poor AI that makes the combat suffer with illogical frustrations. You can't, you can't have a good game if you have a very, very poor AI. There were many times, probably in the, in the 20, 20s for a count, that I was in tall grass or behind an object and an enemy came up walking at the corner or at the grass saw me the white literally went all the way up to when they would be alerted and threatened so what happens next a shootout you or a stealth kill you would think right no they turned the other way and kept walking nothing that's it they wanted me to just go up and stealth kill them. that's it happened like 20 plus times in this entire game this breaks a game the a game is based on the gameplay my 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 theory on games it's gameplay as number one story as a close second visuals sounds simple right so how can how is it that developers can't comprehend that apparently like i said it just uh, that's all i can say about it it's very poor ai just very poor ai all right, my very last negative topic. With no difficulty trophies, exploring everything in first playthrough bears no replay value after that one playthrough. Which, yes, that's true. Literally, if you explore every crevice in the very first playthrough of The Last of Us Part Two, you will have gotten every single trophy. You will have found every single thing you will know the story of everything and anything. I appreciate that they did more of what they implemented into The Last of Us with like dead cor uh, corpses and like they left notes. They implemented a lot more of those into this game. I like that. It's, it, it's good world building storytelling. I agree with that. But there's, there's no trophy that earns you another playthrough if you don't play it on the hardest in the first playthrough. So my advice, if you actually want to play this game again, like I say in every game review, play it on the easiest, get a, get a feel for just the story, and then go to the hardest and get a feel for all the mechanics, if they work well, if they don't work well, which honestly with this game, I can tell you right now, Everything was so blatantly obvious, what worked and what didn't work. The main thing that didn't work, the story. Second main thing, the artificial intelligence. They're both awful, and I disagree with them. So otherwise, I mean, that's all that I really have to say about this game. Again, this isn't a 0 out of 10. It's not a dumpster fire like everybody is claiming it to be. I do believe that they tried to make this a politically driven game based off of their own ideologies. And if that was the case, which is, it, it does definitely look to be the case, if you just play the damn game, this should be a notice 
this is not how you make a game. Not at all. I feel like they had a very good foundation with the first Last of Us. And all they had to do was was expand on it, which they did with the world. The world is brimming with detail and it's giant. It's like a, a, a pseudo open world, kind of like The Witcher 3. But, you know, there's no fast travel. It's a linear story driven game because Sony. But no, it's what they have done to the license of The Last of Us. Shame on Neil Druckmann. I, I had such high hopes for him. After The Last of Us, loved it. 10 out of 10. After Uncharted 4, loved it. 10 out of 10. The Last of Us Part 2, how did it score like 2 or 3 points higher than the average critic score of the likes of the newest God of War? Okay, God of War, everything about it is masterful. Everything about The Last of Us Part 2 is ideology driven, politically driven, so to speak. And damn Neil Druckmann for doing this to a very beloved game, and I'm not the only one that has said this. My friends are angry about this game. I've watched a bunch of other people complaining and, and ranting on YouTube. I've read critic reviews, and it's, it's really awful, the parallel between critic and user reviews. Last I checked, The Last of Us Part 2 on Metacritic for user reviews was sitting at a 4 out of 10, which it definitely rose from 3.3 .3 about three days ago, but it's still in the red, and it's still a bad score compared to the critic average of 95 out of 100. The same exact score as the first one. If I didn't have such high respect... For The Last of Us 1, I would say that's a disgrace to the name The Last of Us. But I'm not even going to let this game touch the likes of the first one. So, anyway. My final review for The Last of Us Part 2 is a 6 out of 10. Like I said, it has 4 positives and a lot of negatives. But you also have to look at a game in every aspect. 6 to me is just above average. And I would say this is the weakest six that I've ever given a game. So, anyway, yeah. I'm not looking forward to any future DLC. I, I hope I hope if they make a third one, whether they fire Neil and bring Bruce Straley back, or they yell at Neil or, or discipline him and he writes a better story and get, get gets rid of... The, all the Westworld girl writers and whatnot, you know, that's up to them. I'm not really looking forward to any future release right now. The Last of Us Part Two just kind of sucked the joy out of me. And I was really excited for last Friday to come. And I, 12.01 a.m. hit. And I'd start, I booted up The Last of Us Part Two immediately. Story, I was in it. And by last night, I had so many harsh, bad things to say. And... Now, now, you can call me a critic. Because I believe I just chewed the hell out of this game. And I still gave it a fair score. And I tried to do it in... I tried to keep my level-headed mind to review this game. And I just... This game pissed me off. It still pisses me off just thinking about it. 6 out of 10 to me is a respectable score towards it. So, thank you.